Hey guys, welcome. How are you today? Uh, I hope your NCLEX reviews are going very well. Today I want to go over the hematologic disorder that we will most likely encounter with our NCLEX exam. And first I want to go over a quick overview of the hematological system as we learn from nursing school. Now we all know that the hematological system is mainly composed of just a few components in the basic level, right? It's composed of basically blood and plasma, right? So we have our RBCs, which are the red blood cells or erythrocytes. We have the WBCs and we have our platelets or thrombocytes, okay? Now for the NCLEX, it's very, very important for us and essential for us to know our blood values or what we call the CBC or in other words, the complete blood count, okay? Now... These are the values that we need to know. Three values that we need to know is that for RBCs, our red blood cells, it's composed of 4.2 to 6.2. So that's easy to, easier to remember. 4.2 to 6.2, between 4.2 and 6.2 millions of cells per microliter. Okay? Now, with our hemoglobin, with our hemoglobin, it's between 11.5 and 17.5. Again, it's between 11.5. The range is 11.5 to 17.5 grams per deciliter. Okay? And for the hematocrit, the normal values would be between 36 and 52%. Okay? So again, it's very important to know our blood values by heart for the NCLEX. And it's very essential that we know these values, obviously, to determine if it's normal or abnormal so we can further assess our patient's conditions, right? So we can ask ourselves, what can be the reason for the high and low values of these components? So first, let's analyze and go over uh, RBCs or the red blood cells, right? Now, if we have a patient with cancer or polycythemia vera, which is, as we all know, a bone marrow disease that basically leads to an abnormal increase in the number of blood cells, primarily the red blood cells of our patient, then the values of our patient's red blood cells will obviously increase, right? Now, on the opposite side, we can ask ourselves, what conditions uh, do we think tends to bring the red, the red blood cell to be lower than normal? Obviously, anemia comes to mind, right? Which uh, we will go over more in depth later in a little bit. Now, let's go over the white blood cells or what we call the leukocytes, right? Now, with the WBCs, the most common causes of increase of our white blood cells, which we are all very familiar with, is infections. So, why is that? Why does infections... Uh, lead to an increase in WBCs. Well, as we all know, our WBC, or what we call leukocytes, is a vital part of the immune system that basically helps our bodies fight off infection. So basically, during an infection, our body physiologically will circulate more and make more WBC in the blood and basically transport those WBCs into the area in which the infection has developed. Now, on the opposite spectrum, let's look at the circumstances of our patient in having a decrease in WBC count. Now, there are various autoimmune disorders such as lupus, which comes into mind, which is a disease of the immune system that leads to long-term or chronic inflammation. They can destroy the white blood cells or basically decrease our WBCs. Okay, now Let's go on our next topic and go over one of the most important hematological disorders that we might encounter in our NCLEX exam, which is anemia. Now, we can basically define anemia as a decrease in the number of red blood cells or RBCs, or if our patient has less than the normal quantity of hemoglobin within the blood. So basically with this disease, there is a decrease in the number of RBCs and as a result, there will be a decrease or a low amount of oxygenation circulation within the body. So what are the general symptoms of anemia? 
while the main basic symptoms can include weakness in our patient, fatigue, and pale skin due to the low amount of oxygen circulation, right? Now, as we also knew and remembered from nursing school, there are several types of anemia, such as sickle cell anemia, there's the pernicious anemia, there's aplastic anemia, and we also have the iron deficiency anemia. Now, I will go over a couple of the types within this review, okay? Now, first, let's go ahead and look at sickle cell anemia. Now, with sickle cell anemia, it's, as we all know, it's an autosomal recessive genetic disorder. Now, what this basically means is that two copies of an abnormal gene must be present in order for the disease or trait to develop, right? So, basically, with sickle cell, there is an abnormal shape of the RBC, or what we call the sickle cell. So, basically, the cell has an abnormal kind of rigid sickle shape. And because of this, it causes a decrease in the cell's ability to become flexible and move freely in the body, right? Which results in the cell getting stuck within the circulation, which is then manifested in pain and other various of complications in our patient. I will continue this review regarding anemia on the next few upcoming videos. And again, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to invest in making sure that you pass your NCLEX exam. And if you do want to know more about the audio review NCLEX course that I have and also a couple of my online courses, which has helped hundreds and hundreds of NCLEX takers pass their NCLEX exam, please visit me at allnursingnotes.com. That's A-L-L and then nursing notes. So allnursingnotes.com. Again, thank you so much for taking your time. Good luck and God bless. Thank you.